Okay, now let's try to find the stationary probability distribution of a birth death process. Um, remember that uh, if a continuous time Markov chain is ergodic, then uh, the probability of being in state j in as t tends to infinity is given by pi j star, which is given by this equation, q j j star pi j star plus uh, this summation should be equal to zero, and of course all the pi j star sum up to one. Now I'm going to state without proof that uh, birth death process is an ergodic continuous time Markov chain. Uh, it does satisfy the conditions. So what we can do is to substitute in the values for qkj and qjj from the uh, birth death process to obtain the equations that you're going to have over here. So when j is greater than or equal to 1, so remember that a birth death process is always going to have one endpoint at least, which is 0, because you can't go below 0 population, and you're going to go to 1 down here. And then subsequent to that, you can have as many states as you want. So it can be infinite or unbounded in this direction, but in this direction it's bounded. So we need to be careful about state j equals 0, and we need to write it down properly. So for j greater than or equal to 1, we can write that uh, this qjj term is given by minus lambda j plus mu j, we saw that earlier, plus, and then here we have the summation, and that summation reduces to lambda j minus one pi star j minus one plus mu j plus one pi star j plus 1, and this sum is equal to 0. And then for j equals 0, we get the equation minus lambda 0 pi 0 star plus mu 1 pi 1 star equal to 0. And then finally, we have the equation pi J st uh, pi j star sigma pi j star j equals 1. So these three equations allow us to find the steady state probability of being in any state of a birth death process. And we'll do an example to see that in just a minute. Uh, just to clarify, uh, the reason why we can do the substitution of lambda j minus 1 and mu j plus 1 is actually fairly straightforward. If you see over here in the term qkj, uh, this is for state j. So we're looking at all k's which are not the same as the state j such that they communicate, so such that the rate qkj is not 0. And if you look at any state j, then it has only two other adjacent states, which are like this, which is one from above, one from below, which are coming in. And this is going to be at the rate q j plus 1 comma j. And this is going to be at the rate q uh, j minus 1 comma j. And of course, we know this is going to be this the same as lambda j minus 1. And this is the same as mu j plus 1. So this is the uh, arrival pr process into state j minus 1, there's a departure process from state j plus 1, and so we substitute these two into this equation, and that gives us the equation over here for uh, pi j star. And of course, there'll be similar equations for each of the uh, uh, states j. It may not be immediately obvious, but it's worth uh, working out on your own to see that this set of equations over here can also be represented in the following way. If we write it out like this, we say uh, we have a row, row vector, uh, pi 0 star, pi 1 star, pi 2, etc. And we have this matrix over here, whoops, uh, given by minus lambda 0, lambda 0, and 0, and all the rest are zeros. And here we have mu 1. This is minus lambda 1 plus mu 1. Then lambda 1, and the rest are zeros. 0, mu 2, minus lambda 2 plus mu 2. 
lambda 2, etc. So what we see over here is kind of a pattern where we have uh, on the main diagonal minus lambda 0 and then minus lambda 1 plus mu 1, minus lambda 2 plus mu 2, minus lambda 3 plus, 3 plus mu 3, etc. And then above the diagonals, we have lambda 0, lambda 1, lambda 2, etc. And below the diagonal, we have mu 1, mu 2, mu 3, etc. And so this is what's called a tridiagonal matrix. And this is going to be equal to 0. So the equations can all be represented in this very compact form. So this entire set of equations here just can be represented as this set of equations where we have pi 0, pi 1 star, pi 2 star, etc multiplied by this particular matrix is equal to 0. And uh, this is often called the Q matrix. And uh, we will see in a minute that the Q matrix is actually very important for us to determine the uh, stationary probability of a birth death process. It's important to distinguish between two different uh, uh, diagrams uh, for a continuous time Markov chain. So when we have a continuous time Markov chain, which we draw, let me draw it like this and just look at a birth this process like so. Um, if, if, the, if I have these states, let's say this is state 0, this is state 1, state 2, then on this uh, figure, if I draw this P, I, J, T, um, that is the uh, transition probability, and it's a function of time, and it's given by the probability that x uh, t uh, equals j conditional on x 0 equals i. So it's a function of time, and it tells you the sort of the probability evolution over time. And we often really don't write down these probability functions because they're dynamic over time. Instead, for continuous time Markov chains, what we really do write down is the transition rates, the Q values, which is, in fact, the derivative of the P values. So Q i j is given by limit delta, delta t tends to 0 of uh, P i j of delta t divided by delta t. So this limit uh, over here is actually what we write on this matrix. And this is the transition rate. So it's important not to confuse uh, the uh, pij transition probabilities, which are time varying, with these rates, which are fixed. And in fact, this is the, this is the rate at which uh, this transition probability is changing. And in, in, in common practice, uh, we would be using uh, fixed rates. Qij is going to be constant, so this is actually a linear linear function. Um, so in a discrete time Markov chain, these transition probabilities are fixed. These are, these are constants. Uh, and so that makes it relatively straightforward to represent discrete time Markov chains. For continuous time Markov chains, instead, we'll be using only the rate matrix, the Qij matrix, rather than these transition probability uh, values over here. So uh, remember that we can write down the transition probabilities, uh, sorry, the steady state transition, uh, take it back, the, we can determine the steady state probability of being in a particular state of a, of a, con of a birth death process uh, as a product of these two matrices, which is the pi 0 star, pi 1 star, pi 2 star, etc., this vector with this matrix over here, uh, which has this nice uh, tridiagonal form, minus lambda 0, minus lambda 1 plus mu 1, minus lambda 2 plus mu 2, etc., and then here is going to be the lower elements of the tridiagonal matrix, mu1, mu2, etc., and on the upper level are going to be the lambda values, lambda0, lambda1, lambda2, etc., and all the rest of the values are 0. So this means that if you're given a birth-death process uh, such as this, 
I just look at the birth death process and I just look at these transition values and let's say I take a three-stage birth death process where I'm annotating it with the rates then I can write down these two matrices essentially by inspection and so it makes it very easy for us to write down these uh, to compute the transition probabilities so let's do a simple example just to show that let's say I have four states over here and I label these states as 0, 1, 2, 3. So this is corresponding to a population where the population can go from a size 0 to size 3. And then when it has more than 3, no more births can occur. And of course, when it goes to 0, no more deaths can occur. And what would be the... So let's put some values down here. So let's say it's 1, 5, 4, 5, 8... So these are the values over here. What can we say about the transition rate matrix, the Q matrix over here? Well, it can we can write it down quite simply by inspection. So here is what it's going to look like. So the matrix looks like this. We're going to have on the uh, main diagonal, we will have the values minus lambda 0. So this is going to be, uh, this is the arrival rate into 0. So that's lambda 0. This is lambda 1. This is lambda 2. This is mu1, mu2, mu3. And so we can write down the values directly over here as being uh, minus 1. And then this is going to be minus 10. So it's lambda plus lambda 1 plus mu1. So it's 5 plus 5 is 10. And then 8 plus 4 is 12. So minus 12. Uh, and then minus 10. So we get the last value is going to be minus mu0. So minus 10. And then the other values in the diagonals are just 1, 5, 4. And then below is going to be 5, 8, 10. And then the other values are all 0. So it's minus 1, minus 1, 0, 0. This is 0 here. This is 0 here and two zeros here. And so this is therefore going to be the Q matrix for this equation for the system and if you write down over here pi 1 star sorry pi 0 star pi 1 star pi 2 star pi 3 star we get a system of equations which along with the equation sigma pi i star equals 1 completely defines the behavior of this of this birth death process so we can uh, essentially compute the behavior of this birth death process. In other words, find out the probability of being in each state simply by solving these two equations, which is a sim set of very simple linear equations.